That case will start right on time. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the beginning of the warmer weather, I hope. Uh, let's go to straight for item number 1A, which is the approval of the minutes of February 2nd, 2015. May I have a motion for that? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay, substantions. Motion carries. Item number 1B1, BMCC. AA in sociology. And AA in, you want to move all four items? Uh, okay. AA in art history. AA in modern languages. AS in studio art. Historically, community colleges at CUNY had a limited number of majors. Over time, with increased enrollment, some of these majors have grown too large to serve students effectively. The current AA and liberal arts major at VMCC, first registered in 1971, at present has an enrollment of 3,400 students, larger than the entire student population at many colleges in the United States. So VMCC is starting to create new majors based on existing tracks within the AA program. The proposed action creates four standalone majors. These are AA in sociology, AA in art history, AA in modern languages, and AS in studio art. Since all the courses are already being offered, this does not entail new costs. This initiative will allow colleges to improve advisement and student tracking while offering students a variety of curricular options to prepare for transfer into a baccalaureate program. Okay. We have a motion to move this item. So moved. These items. Second. Discussion, questions, comments? Straightforward. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions, motion carries. Item number 1B2, York College, MS in Pharmaceutical Science and Business. Yes. <laughs> okay. The curriculum of the MS in Pharmaceutical Science and Business supports the professional development and needs of industry employees and prepares them for managerial positions, combining research curriculum with business courses on management and regulatory compliance. The proposed program will be housed at the Department of Chemistry and the School of Arts and Sciences and will be supported by faculty from the School of Business. York College has a long-standing partnership with the Northeast Regional Lab of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which has been leasing space on York College and on the campus of York College since 2000. York faculty serve as FDA advisors and FDA staff members regularly teach as adjuncts and provide input on curriculum and professional development. Effective in February 2014, York College also signed a memorandum of understanding with the federal office of the FDA. Professional opportunities for program graduates exist in the greater New York area, as well as regionally and nationally, in the pharmaceutical industry and the biopharmaceutical industry, as well as in fields such as cosmetics and food supplements. Um, so moved. I would like to move this. Seconded. Seconded. Discussions? Questions? How large so. would this program be? What are the projections for the program? Can you tell us anything about it? What are the core components of the business side on this, if I may be so bold as to ask? Uh, is yeah. President here, Keyes here? As yes. is the provost. Where is he? Right here. Okay. So we'll just join you at the table. As are our chair of our <coughs> chemistry department, or Dean Chirico and Dr. Chakravati. So, would you repeat the question, please? I didn't hear it. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are, what are? How large is this program, and what sort of projections do you have for the number of students, and what are the core right. components of the? business element of the degree. Okay, sure. Let's talk a little bit about the master's program. The master's program is a discrete program that will be, well, will accept a small cohort of from 25 to 35 students into its first uh, class. It is supported in part currently by an undergraduate program that we've had for about mm, maybe six years, which is a bit larger, somewhere in the range of about 150 students. Um, but we don't necessarily expect to recruit only from that group. 
we expect to recruit from the industry. Across the system. That's correct. And, and across, act, actually, the region. Because the idea here is that folks may be working in the field and looking for this interdisciplinary piece in order to uh, scale the career ladder. So that they're looking to strengthen the pharmaceutical science component while being introduced to the business component. And what they want to do then is to move up the ladder into, in, in the industry. So that's the general frame for this particular degree. So that's one aspect of your question. The second aspect of the question, I'm going to turn to Melitius. Uh, the program is made out of 36 credits, uh, which two-thirds of them, 24 credits, are made of the core uh, part of the program, which is courses uh, in three main thrusts of the pharmaceutical industry. One is in business management, the other is research and discovery, and the other is in the regulatory areas. So we want the students in the program to be well versed in those three areas. And then the second part, tw uh, 12 credits, is uh, to be tailored into their professional preferences. Uh, people who want to go into the business part or into the regulatory sciences or into the other or into the research. So we will give the opportunity to the student, to the students or the participants of the program to tailor the program to best suit their professional needs and growth. I promise this is my last question. Is it how, mu how much of that, or is any of it involving finance, how to set up financial projections and run the, the numbers with regard to pharmaceutical sciences? Uh, our program is more on the business management. On the management organizational side. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Is this a unique program, by the way, with engineering? It you? is. Thank mm -hmm. you. It is. I thought it was. I just and we really like the interdisciplinary aspect of it, it as sounds well. like it is. Oh. I think this fills a tremendous need. I think That's it's a wonderful program, especially in light of the FDA um, presence on your campus. It's for internships, for students. I think it's just fabulous. Thank you. Congratulations on being the first. <laughs> <laughs> So, may I have a, a motion to move this item? So moved. So, okay. I move. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Uh, nays, abstentions? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, item number 1B3, John Jay College, BA in Spanish. This proposed program prepares students for multiple career paths, the result from the widespread use of Spanish in the U.S and the many economic ties with Latin American countries and Spain. The program offers two concentrations, one on Spanish and Latin American literatures and languages, and the other on interpretation and translation, equipping students for work in legal settings, healthcare, and social services. Students will also be well prepared for further professional or academic study. How many students do they have in that uh, course? Uh, I do we have a John Jay representative well, here? Yes, we do. Can you come to the table, please, so we can record you? So are you? Hello. Please uh, identify I'm yourself. I'm the Associate oh, Provost Scott Stoddart, um, John Jay. Right now, there's only a Spanish minor, and there are about 60 students in it. It's grown each year that we've had the, um, the minor by about 20 students. So there's more and more interest in it. What I think is really unique about the program is the translation aspect of it. A lot of schools in the area have been trying to get um, the in interpretation translating thing off the ground, and um, this is the first one that I think is really going to do it. <laughs> and we have our chair of our department here as well. Yes, who, who well, Professor Dapia is here, the chair of modern languages and literature. And I'd like to mention that 41% of our students are are Hispanic, yes. and we have 15,000 students at the college, so we're talking mm -hmm. about many, many thousands of Hispanic students. So there's a lot of interest. <coughs> Professor Dabia, do you want to Yeah, speak? correct. We have, um, as uh, Dean Stoddard had said, we have had a Spanish minor since 2010, and it has really, the enrollment has increased steadily from zero to 20 to 40 to 60, and now we are almost 70. 
and we are also working right now with certificate programs in legal translation and interpretation, and also the enrollment has been over what we have our expectations were, and we have more than 18, uh, uh, 30, if we consider both together, the two certificates. So when they finish this course, what are they prepared for? Yeah. When what they, is uh, the expectation of what they're going to be doing? Correct. Well, the, we arrange the Spanish major so that there are two concentrations, one in interpretation and translation, and the other in cultural studies. Mm -hmm. But with a special emphasis in legal studies and human rights issues, because of course we wanted to mirror the focus of the college. And the expectation in terms of jobs is for well, if you notice from our letters of support, for instance, on page 116, um, there is 116 and also um, 116, that is uh, the letter by Fern Chair, that is co-chair of the advisory committee on court interpreters that is part of the New York State Unified Court System, and also the letter by Sandra Bryan on page 119, that she was the former coordinator of the Court Interpreting Services, also part of the New York, New York State Unified Court System. Both of them attest for the need of interpreters and translators in the New York area metropolitan area. And the New York, if you go to our proposal on page 7, the New York State Department of Labor projects a 46.1 uh, percentage employment growth rate in the field of translation and interpretation, as opposed to the general growth rate of 14%. Thank you. If, uh, yeah, so I need a motion to move it. Oh, I certainly am honored to move adoption of this proposal. Second. Okay. Now we can open for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this will show exactly how old I am. Yeah. Are there any requirements, John Jay, for learning a language? In other words, this is not a requirement. Learning Spanish, translation, or Chinese or any language is not a requirement for a degree. This is an age thing. They don't have requirements. No. Well, as part, part, it's part of the Gen Ed, but that, sorry, it's part of the general education that it's an option. But it's, it's only an option, though. right? Well, we used no, to have. No, it's a requirement. Used, used it's a requirement. But now it's it dropped. It is a requirement. And this is a BA. No, no. Modern language 101. Every student, as part of our new Gen Ed, it's a requirement. They have to take a modern language course 101 that is a beginning one, and a modern language course 102. Great. So that if someone wants to do this uh, translation interpretation concentration, they would have done 101 if they have no previous knowledge. They would have done 101 in the first semester, 102 in the second semester, and they will be able to meet the requirements. Are the courses total immersion? Yes. Thank you. Any more questions? No, that's <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions? The motion carries. Item number 1B, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 1B4, LaGuardia Community College, AAS in Energy Technician. The proposed program, developed in collaboration with industry partners, will offer two concentrations, mechanical technology and electrical technology. Graduates will be ready for employment as energy technicians. In addition to being offered to LaGuardia students, the program will also be taught at the new Energy Tech High School in Long Island City, Queens, with the goal of increasing opportunities in STEM fields for minority students. Energy technician, what is that prepared to look like? What are they going to be doing? Well, first I need a motion. To I move. I move it up. OK. Uh, Anybody Provost from LaGuardia? Yes. Okay. Yeah, can you please sit sure. there and talk into the mic, yes. please? Of course. I'm Paul Arcario, the provost at LaGuardia. These positions, um, for example, research and development of high-tech products, 
aerospace product and parts development, manufacturing of navigational, me measuring instruments, electro-medical uh, and control instruments, that type of thing. It's, uh, and there are two concentrations, an electrical and a mechanical. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, I move okay. adoption. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 1B5, Mecca Evers College, BS in Financial Economics. This curriculum offers a foundation in economic and financial theories and practices governing monetary and fiscal policy. It will prepare students for positions in financial management and economic analysis in the public or private sectors where there is ample demand for well-prepared employees. Students will also be ready to pursue graduate study or professional certification, such as in financial management or as a real estate analyst. So I, moved. I, yes, all right, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> you had to it, okay. Discussions, questions? How many credits required? President. Please identify yourself for, for the record. <clears throat> And speak into a mic, please. Okay, I'm Augustino Kereke, the provost. I have the chair of the department, I'm Dr. Ebre. Uh, I have the dean of the School of Business back there. And of course, our president, Dr. Crew. Welcome. Okay, uh, my name is Chinyara Ebre. I am the chair of the Department of Economics and Finance. Uh, could you please repeat your question? How many credits are required in this? 120 credits. 120. And, and, and can you talk generally about extent to which they're divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics. And also, I heard real estate analysts, are there courses in real estate finance? Yes. Uh, <coughs> the, this is, the, the way this uh, BS in financial economics is structured, uh, and, and there are many structures that you see around the country for BS in financial economics, but as a structured uh, fundamentally around uh, a base of business management with an emphasis in financial economic analysis. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, um, once the business core is completed, students now have uh, to take required courses in economics and finance, as opposed to pure economics or pure finance. So uh, there is a more or less equal division. Students will take uh, uh, microeconomic theory, intermediate micro theory, intermediate macro theory, and then they take uh, intermediate corporate finance, as well as uh, intermediate business statistics because the, the degree is also structured to have a strong uh, emphasis in quantitative analysis. And then there are related courses which are, uh, um, we designed newly because uh, we have not had real estate investment analysis courses. There are two um, uh, real estate investment analysis courses which uh, uh, form a core and then there's also an advanced elective which for those who want to uh, go more in depth into real estate investments. How many students you have in that program and how, what the percentage of Hispanic taking that uh, program? Um, McGivers College, uh, I wouldn't say has a large percentage of Hispanic students. I understand that. Um, right now, what we, we have had since 1973 <clears throat> is a general business degree. And over those years, students have essentially taken courses in finance uh, as part of the elective, but now the Department of Economics and Finance has been separated from the department that offers the general business degree. And in fact, what we have seen is that over the years, and we have the statistics as part of our proposal, over the years, pretty close to 20 to 15 to 25 percent of the students who claim to be business majors take at least 18 to 24, in fact, up to 30 credits of courses in economics and finance. And so from that projection, we are looking at approximately 100 students you know, once we advertise the program. And then it will grow from then because when students come for our um, admission orientations, we have also seen them asking, do you have a specific degree in finance or in economics or in financial economics? And we simply say, well, you can do that by coming into the business program and you can select electives in finance, which we have. We've had upper level electives in finance and economics. Uh, you can do that, but many students are not satisfied with that. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I see that you have four full-time faculty members. Um, 
and about eight, five, five six, seven part-time faculty members, and that you plan to hire three more full-time faculty members, no, one more full-time and two part-time in February 2016. Um, is, is this a, a department that stands by itself? Is there a department? Yes, it's a department that stands by itself, yes. With four full-time faculty members? Yes, four PhDs, yes. But we require at CUNY five full-time faculty members to be a department. I, I don't think I am in a position to answer that question since I'm just a member of the faculty. This is an administrative decision that was probably made between the college president and CUNY Central Office. And if it was acceptable to CUNY Central Office, yes. uh, it's, not, it, it's not my position to um, and, answer and that. We, uh, as, as the provost, we have um, positions that we have to get back to the, the department that we intend to hire. <coughs> the, the, uh, we have positions that I'm we intend to hire. I hear you. I now, I said as provost, you know, we have positions that we intend to hire into the department, yes. the, starting from the fall. So we have lines that we have allocated to the department to be able to run this degree program. Yes, because... Yes, we do. We have the lines there. Good. And you, you have the budget to be able to hire full-time faculty? Yeah, into the program? department, yeah, because yes. it's a priority since we're having this degree program. The answer is yes, yes. <coughs> to the, I'm sorry, uh, Rudy yeah. Crew, President. Um, yes, the answer is yes to the question of whether we have the budget to be able to do that. Well, good for you because most of the CUNY colleges right now are struggling to hire uh, people because of the budget crisis, so right. that's why this was very much on my mind. Right. Thank you for that clarification. Mr. Chair, um, so you're, I think I heard that you'll have three real estate courses, two core courses, and an advanced course elective? Yes. And do you have the faculty to teach the real estate analysis and finance now? or they We have faculty their... to teach finance now because uh, we've been teaching that finance. The, in the real estate, area, real that estate. is an area where as soon as we, we get approval, we'll begin to, uh, we'll be hiring seek, into yeah, that. to get uh, our faculty to teach the real estate courses. As a matter of fact, we are projecting to begin to um, offer the real estate courses only from about spring of 2016, so to give us time to, mm -hmm. uh, and I suspect, uh, I mean, realistically speaking, that we're going to be looking at at least beginning from, say, part-time faculty, because it's going to take a while to actually go there and hunt down mm -hmm. somebody who can uh, actually take over the area on a full-time basis. Mm -hmm. Well, as the real estate capital of New York, of, of, of the U.S., mm -hmm. I can't emphasize how strong, strongly enough how important this is within the CUNY system and that we get the very best people to teach the Maker Ever students these real estate analysis courses. It's a very, very important area. So I'm glad to hear this. I know but you from, have to hire into it. Is right. that correct? Yes. Yes. But I know from Baruch, we, you know, that th these faculty demand extraordinarily high salaries, <clears throat> way beyond the normal range of CUNY faculty. Oh, full time. Yes, the full time people. So that's going to be a uh, a great we'll take accomplishment. Take that under advisement as we, yeah. as we meet with our <laughs> All right. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. Will you, uh, uh, one quick question. I'm sorry. In order to teach full time across the board in these areas, your faculty must have a PhD. Mm -hmm. Because yes. in real estate finance and analysis and that sort of teaching, most of the experts do not have doctorates. Right. They may have an MBA from Wharton or even if they're Goldman Sachs they don't have PhDs. And to have a Goldman Sachs faculty member, for example, mm -hmm. are there any ways that this can be waived for certain, for there certain is, courses There and is um, mm -hmm. a yeah. distinguished lecturer could be hired um, without a PhD at a high salary. That's a possibility. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And we've done that in the past. Sorry? We've done that in the past. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, any more questions? Now let's call the question. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions? Thank you. Item number 1B6. Six. Six.
College of Staten Island, BS in Earth and Environmental Science, BS in Earth Science and Adolescent Education 7 through 12 grade. The proposed program will prepare students for entry-level jobs as geoscientists, environmental technicians, and geologists, both in the private sector and in governmental agencies. This field has high projected job growth at both federal and state levels with interest growing in sustainability and the environment. A separate version of the program leading to a secondary education teaching certificate in grades 7 through 12 is also being proposed. There is a current shortage of earth science teachers in New York City and the program would address this demand. I move this um, for adoption. Second. Second by Tristan Fimatino. Uh, welcome, the President. <clears throat> Any questions? No questions on this one. This is a good one. Right. Yes, this <laughs> is great. <laughs> We're excited about the Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Did you, was there a motion in the second one? Yes. 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 Okay. It was with lightning speed. It was lightning yes. speed. My favorite subject, you know, you know, super strong. Well, Wellington um, uh, <laughs> reminded me, and I, I, I made the motion. <laughs> okay. Let's call the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions, motion carries. Thank you. Item number 1B7, City University of New York, Independent Standing and Degree Authority for the CUNY School of Professional Studies. This is a more unusual action. It doesn't involve a new program, but the authorization for CUNY SPS to become an independent freestanding school. The CUNY School of Professional Studies was created by the board in 2003. At that time, SPS was formally made a division of the Graduate School and University Center. Although it has always had its own governance structure and is not overlapped in academic offerings with the Graduate Center. Since then, SPS has grown rapidly to respond to the needs of the city and state job market and to serve adult students. It now has over 2,000 students and offers a variety of certificates, baccalaureate programs, and master's programs. The proposed action marks a new stage of institutional maturity as SPS is embarking on a process to become an independent institution with its own degree authority and accreditation status. In other words, it will no longer be under the auspices of the Graduate Center and University, Graduate School and University Center. SPS already has its own classroom facilities on West 31st Street in addition to administrative space. All faculty and administrative staff are expected to remain in place. Once completed, this action will allow the School of Professional Studies to better serve existing students and will strengthen recruitment on the regional and national level. I move adoption. Second. 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 Discussion? Who, who will the director of the school report to directly since it's going to be independent? Uh, this is uh, Dean John Pavlescu. Okay. Trustee Shorter, how are you? Obviously, this is a very exciting day for our school, and and you know I was the founding dean, and I am still the dean of the School of Professional Studies. I would That's hope right. that as this goes through, uh, I will continue to be the dean, and I would report directly to the chancellor. Gotcha. On this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that clarity. Yes. It's about time. Any more discussions? Now, let's move the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nays, abstentions, motion carries. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very momentous. Uh, got the chance to welcome the, the, the uh, president of Queens College and a former one over here as well. <laughs> to, to have you. This is a historic uh, item for us, is item 18, uh, 1B8, Queens College resolution to award an honorary degree at the college commencement uh, ceremony. Uh, the first one is Andrew Goodman, the civil rights uh, activist. Uh, this is the, the posthumously awarded uh, Doctor uh, of Humane Letters. And the second one will be Jonathan Kozo, educator and author, uh, also Doctor of Humane Letters. With that, I open the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's great to be here with the committee. Uh, the first one, Andrew Goodman, uh, uh, was killed. In '64, part of the Mississippi summer, and uh, along with uh, James Cheney and Michael Schreiner, uh, 
And uh, this year, President Obama uh, awarded the three of them, but uh, Goodman, the Presidential Medal of Honor, which is the highest honor that the country can give. It's the first Queens College alum uh, ever to receive that award. And we thought that if the nation was doing that, that uh, we needed to, um, uh, we could do no less than to award uh, him with the highest award that our institution could uh, provide. And uh, that is why we presented this resolution. I'll be happy to say that um, it was approved uh, unanimously by the entire uh, Senate uh, in, in the campus without going to the subcommittee because mm -hmm. I think people felt that it was, um, in polite terms, a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very well said. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. As you know, uh, Queens College has been home to these uh, proud recipients, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I remember uh, you, the, you honored uh, Jerry Mitchell, who's the uh, author, uh, and then the, um, we got to meet uh, the Andrew Goodman's mother, Carol, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was one of the most memorable moving yes. mm -hmm. uh, experience of uh, those of you that have seen the movie Mississippi Burning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is the uh, reflection of the good work of CUNY, and as well as the people who step up to play to do the right thing. And so I can't I can be more proud of uh, the Goodman family, James Cheney, and the um, you know, and the Queens College community and the CUNY community. Thank you. Uh, do uh, the second candidate? Yes, I mean, it, are you voting separately or? Let's move it as a block. Okay. Do it together. Uh, well, Jonathan Kosol is, is someone who probably needs some introduction in, in, in the world of education, uh, you know, prolific author, uh, founder of a number of, of uh, nonprofits uh, um, working on education. So uh, we thought that it would be perfectly, you know, fitting in, in our most important academic uh, mm -hmm. ceremony to honor someone with his <coughs> and distinction in, in the college. So um, happy to take any questions about him, but uh, very, very proud to have him also. Uh, hopefully be awarded a degree. Okay. Yes, I, I move uh, adoption of both uh, honorary degrees. These are wonderful choices. Thank you. Second. Okay. Without any further questions, then let's move the question, uh, the motion. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays. Abstention. <coughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And I go back to you. Committee of Fiscal Affairs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, number item 1B9, College of Staten Island, and this time is honorary degree at the commencement for Sally Williams. Um, oh, President Fritz. I'll just read a brief summary of her accomplishments and turn it over to you. Uh, Sally Williams retired from a career of 35 years in the federal government, which culminated with working for the U.S. Civil Service Commission, where she established offices and oversaw the agency's field offices throughout the Northeast, as well as Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Williams has held various positions for the American Society for Public Administration and has served in a number of high-profile community roles on Staten Island. She continues her work today as a community activist and has had a continuous record of advocacy and support for higher education on Staten Island. Bill, did you want to? Yes, I'm, I'm just really uh, so excited to present uh, Sally uh, Williams to the board for an honorary degree. She's a, a one of the key community leaders on Staten Island. Uh, she has been a longtime friend of the College of Staten Island. I can't, uh, I think, <laughs> as, as far back as anybody remembers, she's participated in every one of our commencements and, uh, uh, and main events. She was a founder of member, founding uh, member of the board of directors of the College of Staten Island Foundation. She still serves on that, uh, on that uh, role today. She has a really a long time uh, history with the college. Her father, R. Lee uh, Williamson, who is uh, unfortunately no longer uh, with us, was actually one of the founders of Staten Island Community College, one of our predecessor institution so she really uh, has has a, a lifetime literally a lifetime of uh, service and affiliation to the college and uh, you know probably one of our strongest uh, friends that we have on the island and uh, you, you know she was unanimously uh, recommended uh, to me by the uh, honorary degree uh, 
committee that's chaired by the provost and was unanimously uh, approved by the full uh, meeting of the faculty senate uh, earlier in the semester. Okay. <coughs> so may I have a motion to move this item? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, abstentions. Thank you. Item number 1B10, Baruch College. Resolution to award uh, honorary degrees at the college uh, commencement ceremony. David Carroll, MBA 71, co founder of the International Security Exchange. Uh, David Carroll is, is, as Wellington just said, the co founder of the International Securities Exchange, which operates a U.S. options exchange. Mr. Carroll has served as a chairperson since 2008 and a director since 1997. Mr. Krell formerly was an adjunct professor at Rutgers University Graduate School of Management and at Baruch College. He has also taught seminars and workshops at the New York Institute of Finance. He is a member of the Baruch College Fund Board and the Zicklin School of Business Dean's Advisory Board. Okay, and we also have a second candidate, uh, Luis Alberto Moreno, President of Inter-American Development Bank. Since 2005, Luis Alberto Moreno has been president of the Inter-American Development Bank, a leading source of development funding for Latin America and the Caribbean. Moreno offers, embodies the best of business acumen and public service, much in the tradition of Baruch College's namesake. He leads a dynamic institution centrally involved in shaping the future of the Western Hemisphere. In that role, he has been particularly attentive to issues of human capital in Central and South America. <clears throat> and if, if I'm not mistaken, he was also an ambassador from Colombia to the United States, and I went to his residence in D.C. Yeah. For He's seven a wonderful, years, wonderful man. I have yes. photos with him. Mm. In that Great case, choice. would you like to move them all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank okay. Second, if I can. Second. Okay. Well, thank you. We're very excited by both of these um, uh, nominees for honorary degrees. David Krell is a Baruch alumnus. He received his MBA at Baruch, and as um, as we counted on his um, achievements in in his career, he has also been uh, very generous to Baruch and uh, serves on the Baruch uh, College Fund board uh, and uh, is very active in the in the school. Luis Alberto Moreno, as uh, was mentioned, was uh, the, uh, he was actually born in the United States and he had dual citizenship because he was born when his father was studying medicine mm. in Washington, D.C. But he had to uh, <clears throat> give up his U.S. citizenship when he became ambassador to the U.S. from Colombia. Really? Uh, oh, tremendous right. uh, achievement <laughs> and wonderful um, individual who currently is very active with us because in our School of Public Affairs, we're endeavoring to start an, an international affairs program with an emphasis on hemispheric studies, and uh, he has been uh, very key in uh, creating connections for the school in that endeavor. So we're very enthusiastic about both of these candidates. Very deserving individuals. Uh, if I may call the question, all yes. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice choices. Uh, item number 1B12, I believe. Or 11. Oh, 11. Oh, 11. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, Mega Evers uh, College resolution to award honorary degrees. Uh, there are two of them. Uh, the first is Medgar Wiley Evers, after whom CUNY's Medgar Evers College is named. He's a seminal figure in the history of the American Civil Rights Movement, known as the voice of many disenfranchised Americans. Elected the first field secretary of the NAACP, Evers created new strategies to enfranchise and empower African Americans until he was silenced by a shot fired into his back in the driveway of his home in 1963. And I think the appropriateness of this honorary degree will be evident to all. Mm -hmm. President Crew, did you? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, nothing more to really add. This is a, uh, it's an extremely uh, huge honor for us, not only because it's the namesake of the school, but because his, uh, his wife, Merle Evers, uh, will be in attendance to receive the degree posthumously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I could not think of uh, a more fitting person in a more fitting situation, given the 
nature of the, the conversation in the nation uh, and in the world uh, for us to honor um, uh, him with, uh, with an honorary degree. And the second uh, person? Is uh, Bruce Ratner, executive chairman of Forest City Ratner Companies, the degree Doctor of Humane Letters. In 1985, Bruce Ratner funded, founded the Forest City Ratner Companies, of which he is now the executive chairman. He developed the $1 billion downtown Metro Tech complex. He is probably most known for heading the group that brought that bought the New Jersey Nets and moved the NBA basketball team to Brooklyn. Ratner is a board member of the Museum of Jewish Heritage, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, the City Parks Foundation, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Study Center, and the Weill Cornell Medical College. I would only add that uh, Bruce is a longtime friend. Um, he's been both a personal friend of mine and a member of the, uh, the college community in the sense that he has helped uh, to underwrite many of our activities. In fact, uh, we have now had two graduations uh, uh, at the Barclay Center as opposed to graduating in, in the city. Great. And uh, um, Bruce has been uh, just a huge uh, supporter of the Medgar family in, in, in many respects and uh, continues to be so. I move these. These are wonderful, wonderful honors and re recipients. Seconded by the Trustee Di Martino. Second. Discussions? It's long overdue uh, for uh, especially the, 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 how the college is named after. Mm -hmm. All those uh, in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays, abstentions? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Yeah. Uh, item number. Did you want to say anything? Yeah. Item number 1B13, New York City College of Technology. Oh, oh, I'm keep on jumping. School of Law, uh, item number B12. Um, Seymour Boyers, law firm partner, first chair of CUNY uh, Law School, Board of Visitors. Okay. The Honorable Seymour Boyers is a partner at the law firm of Gare, Gare, Conison, Steigman, Macau, Bloom, and Rubinowitz. Judge Boyers was designated as the first chair of the CUNY Law School Board of Visitors and served in that position from 1983 until 2002. He continues to serve as a member of the Board of Visitors. Judge Boyers has always been committed to public service and to the training of young lawyers. He helped form the Boyers, Davis, and Brown Public Interest Fellowship for CUNY Law School students. Would you like to add anything? Absolutely. Uh, my name is C.J. Ortuno, CUNY School Law. I'm the Executive Director of Development. Uh, Judge, Judge Boyers continues to be involved with the law school, and uh, he often says that if CUNY law existed when he was going to law school, he would have picked CUNY law. Uh, of course, he's only 30 years old. So. <laughs> uh, but uh, Judge Boyers is a um, is really a, a name that is spoken highly of in the law school and is thought of highly, and the students connect uh, with him personally when they get a chance to uh, take on a summer public interest fellowship in his name. Uh, so moved. Seconded. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. Now we can go to uh, <laughs> item number 13, New York City College of Technology. And the honoree is uh, Charles Phillips, CEO of uh, Info. Mr. Charles Phillips, Esquire, is currently the CEO of Info, a company that specializes in enterprise software applications. Phillips was appointed to President Obama's Economic Recovery Advisory Board in 2009 to provide advice and counsel in addressing the late 2000s recession. Phillips has made substantial contributions to nonprofits, schools, community groups, and civic groups. In 2010, he combined several of his charities into the Phillips Charitable Organization, a nonprofit foundation. Thank you. Uh, I would just add that um, he's been a, a great uh, supporter of the university. He's reached out. Uh, we have many of our students, not only at City Tech, but at other campuses that are doing internships. And he's actually given the opportunity for our faculty to take part in some of his uh, company's training sessions so they can get insight on how some of these ERP, uh, mm -hmm. ERP systems actually operate. So we're very thankful to have him, and I think he's going to be a a good supporter of the university for many years to come. 
it yeah. fits very well with your school curriculum and all your three D printing machine. And just happens to machine. fit in. <laughs> uh, uh, I will move this uh, for adoption. Second. Okay. Discussions. Sounds like a very logical and nice choice. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. Thank you, President Hassan. Thank you. Uh, item number 1B14, Graduate School and University Center uh, resolution to award the uh, honorary degrees to three individuals at the commencement ceremony. Okay, the first, a mic, please. The first of these so is Lydia Davis, MacArthur Prize winning fiction writer, translator, and professor for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Lydia Davis, currently professor and writer in residence at the University of Albany, SUNY, is an acclaimed fiction writer and translator. She is famous in literary circles for her brilliantly inventive short stories, as well as for her translations of Marcel Proust. In fall 2003, Lydia Davis received one of 25 MacArthur Foundation Genius Awards. Her most recent collection, Varieties of Disturbance, which came out in May 2007, was featured on the front cover of the Los Angeles Times Book Review and garnered a starred review from Publishers Weekly. And we have with us David Owen from the Graduate Center. If you wanted to add anything? Um, just that we're very, I, I was going to really say that we have. Could you identify yourself? Oh, I'm David Olin, the Associate Provost. Um, we're very pleased that we have these, these three uh, people, two of whom have MacArthur Genius Awards, <laughs> and uh, not that we're trying to pile on, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's very gratifying that these people have been recognized in three areas that are really important to the Graduate Center, which is the arts, literature, and social justice. And each of them has made original and important contributions and it, to things that are very close to our hearts at the, at the Graduate Center. So, I, I mean, that, I have nothing to add to the all right, that sounds good, but maybe I should say who the other two yes. are. Yes. Uh, the second one is Ai-Jen Pu, Director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance for the degree Doctor of Humane Letters. Ai-Jen Pu is the Director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance and Co-Director of Caring Across Generations. The Domestic Workers Alliance is the leading organization working to build power, respect, and fair labor standards for the two and a half million nannies, housekeepers, and elderly caregivers in the U.S. I should say caregivers for the elderly in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2011, Ajin Pu helped launch Caring Across Generations, a movement to build a caring majority committed to allowing people to mature with dignity, security, and independence. Ajin Pu serves on the board of directors of Moms Rising, National Jobs with Justice, Working America, and the National Council on Aging. And just to move on to the third, that is Patricia Phelps de Cisneros, co-founder of Fundacion Cisneros. For more than four decades, Patricia Phelps de Cisneros has fervently supported education and the arts, with a particular focus on Latin America. In the 1970s, along with her husband, Gustavo Cisneros, she founded the New York City and Caracas-based Fundacion Cisneros. Its mission is to improve education throughout Latin America and to foster global awareness of the region's heritage and many contributions to world culture. And I do have a question for Provost Olin, which is, which, which of these two also got the MacArthur Genius mm -hmm. Award. Uh, Ajahn Poo. Ajahn Poo. Oh, Ajahn Poo. Yes. Okay. 2014. Excellent. Any questions? Or I mean, they're no, they're wonderful yeah. choices. Mm -hmm. um, so moved. Yes. Second. second. Discussions. Questions. If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 1B15, Brooklyn College, <coughs> resolution to award honorary degrees to two distinguished individuals. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Matthew Moore, Associate Provost for Faculty and Administration. Um, it's 
a great pleasure to present uh, these very strong candidates for honor honorary degrees. Um, David Amram uh, has had a career in music that is uh, beyond distinguished, uh, littered with names like Charles Mingus, Oscar Pettiford, uh, Leonard Bernstein. He's very productive. He also uh, embodies a number of core commitments of our vibrant conservatory of music and our arts programs more generally. He uh, has exemplified crossover in a number of ways in his life uh, in kinds of creative activity. He's a composer, conductor, and an author. In musical genres, he's contributed to jazz, classical, ethnic, and folk and opera, and also has brought his music into other areas of performance, uh, theater and film and television. So he is just a perfect candidate for Brooklyn College. Uh, our second candidate, Barry Salzberg, uh, for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, is an alumnus of the college of whom we are exceptionally proud. Um, he has had not only a brilliant business career, winding up as the global CEO of Deloitte Touche, but has also really lived out a commitment to the ideals of the college. He exemplifies the um, what uh, what students from modest means can do with uh, with a CUNY education and with a Brooklyn College education. And he has gone on to try to provide the same opportunities for students like himself. His work with the College Summit, his, uh, the $50 million commitment that his firm made to advancing women and underrepresented groups in accounting, and his very influential um, argument for uh, the business case for diversity. So he has um, you know, really exemplified uh, civic commitment also in his work with the United Way, with the YMCA of Greater New York, and for our students in particular providing an internship for accounting students from Brooklyn College. Great. Right. So moved. Any second? Second. second. Discussions? Quick question. Do these candidates, uh, have they been notified or are they aware that they're being considered? I. I honestly I, do not know. I believe that is usually the case yeah, because yeah. they're also asked if they would be able to attend the ceremony. Yeah. So there's usually, uh, of course, they understand that it requires the vote and approval of the board of yeah. Yeah. trustees, yeah. Yes. but uh, they are alerted, I believe. Usually what we do is we, um, we consider candidates without their awareness, but when the chancellor has approved them before their names are sent to the board, to us, they're asked whether they are available on the day of commencement so of because they have to be able to be present to receive. Gotcha. Thank you. And commencement is coming up. Yes, very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> right. Okay. With that, let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, abstentions? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, are there any more items? I believe we have concluded our business. So may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank I know you. it's a long one. Thank you everyone Thank for you. coming.